Um, I'm Molly Shanley. I'm a professor of political science and women's studies at Vassar College. Um, my writing, uh, it, it, I'm a political theorist, and so I think about the implications of certain decisions that we make both as individuals and as citizens in terms of public policy for very fundamental values of American political life, equality and freedom. And that sounds very abstract and very general, but in recent years I've tended to deal with thinking about those values as they apply to policy having to do with families. So I wrote a book about gender equality and marriage and why it has seemed so much more difficult to get um, laws and policies that will improve gender equality in marriage than it is for single people. I don't think that male-female equality is such a problem for the society when people are not married, but it is when you think about family relationships. Um, and then I thought about um, the questions of state regulation of marriage. Uh, what's the degree to which the state should regulate marriage? And the disputes about whether it's good to have state regulation of same-sex relations. Moving on to questions of family formation intergenerationally, I've dealt with reproductive technologies and all kinds of ethical questions that arise around those. One of the most interesting for someone who's interested in gender, race, and class, as I am, is the dispute surrounding surrogacy. That is when a woman bears a child uh, on commission for a, a couple or an individual. The question of how is women's choice and women's freedom implicated in that uh, uh, issue, both for individuals and for us as a society, is one which engages me deeply. So my writing process is um, one in a uh, multi-stage, uh, and I'll be emphasizing that throughout my remarks because the process is not, I think, a simple one, and it absolutely is not one of one sitting or one final uh, conclusion. So I usually begin, obviously, by reading, by looking at movies, by thinking about portrayals of whatever it issue is I'm concerned with in popular culture, uh, of talking to people, sometimes informally, face to face, other times at meetings, professional meetings where people are debating these issues, so that I get a sense of what's the conversation that I want to enter. I then uh, think about exactly that question of not only what is the conversation I want to enter, but what do I think about this issue? And will then try to put down my preliminary thoughts. It used to be when I was writing that I would think through what do I think about this issue in great detail and try to outline or pin down my argument very completely and thoroughly before I really began my first draft. However, as I've aged and been more experienced, I realize that the process of writing is one that is incredibly clarifying to my own thought process. It gives me new insights. So now my process is more, after I've thought through an issue, to write quickly uh, and to write at a much more preliminary stage because doing so really helps me understand what's at stake. Once I have a draft in hand, I then tend to go back and fill in gaps to make sure that I have the documentation that I want, to make sure the sections go in some kind of appropriate order, and to become much more detailed at that point. I must say that in the process of writing, when I have come to the conclusion, uh, I don't stop there because it almost invariably is the case that the conclusion contains what really should be at the beginning of the paper. And usually at some stage I take that last paragraph, I move it to the front of the paper, read through again making everything fit what's there, and come to some more usually nuanced and uh, interesting conclusion than I originally had. So something like that. There's no template for it and there's no formula, but those are the kinds of stages that I go through. As I have explained, I think revision is crucial. Um, I, and I, I, students will not believe how many drafts I go through to get a published article or a chapter, um, at least 17, um, and usually twice that. Uh, that, it seems to me, is more than one can ask of beginning writers. Um, I don't expect my students to do that, but in almost every assignment I give now, I try to make sure, I, I make it impossible to do the assignment without two drafts, and I try to make sure that people do three. Because in that process of revision, for the kinds of work that I do, where the argument and reflection about the argument matter, 
again, the process of writing is not simply recording what I have thought, but it's crucial to discovering what I think. And therefore, I revise both for clarity of expression, which gets better. It's a matter of aesthetics and of uh, making things look good and sound good and read well, but also of clarifying what is the point and what is the argument and what do I really think about whatever it is I'm engaging. In my own sense of myself as a writer, it was after I began teaching at Vassar that I actually became what I would think of as a, as a good writer. And that was because I was reading so many student papers, and particularly in the Introduction to Political Theory course, which was the course I taught regularly as a young assistant professor, I would be reading 40 and 50 essays comparing the ideas of freedom in John Locke and Rousseau, say. Um, and I would try to make interesting questions, but it was, and I had very smart students, and all of them had good things to say. And so what distinguished one paper from another became clearer and clearer. And part of that was not simply the ideas, but the way those ideas were expressed. And I began to realize how important it was to tell the reader at the beginning what I was about and what I thought and where this paper was going to go and give them guideposts. I realized the importance of topic sentences at the beginning of every paragraph and how it was important to have a, a clear path from beginning to end, how the f I now think the first person voice is really important. It's important to know what you think. And I emphasize that to my students of ways of revealing that if they don't want to say I, but I find I completely acceptable because it engages me. So in honing my craft, it was realizing what worked as I read other people's work that was revelatory to me.